Hey everybody and welcome to this first tasting of the Paul John Methuna. Now I am obviously very happy and there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one is this was a surprise to me. I reached out to Paul John about something completely unrelated and they sent a couple of bottles that I'm planning on doing with something later in the month, um, possibly next month, but they included this as a surprise. Now the Methuna, just putting this out there, is a pretty expensive bottle. It's part of their Zodiac series, which had the Kanya as the original one or Kanya, I'm not sure how to say it properly, but the Methuna is the second in the Zodiac series. And Methuna is essentially the Indian version of Gemini, as in the Zodiac sign. And it reflects a the Indian calendar. And it's about a period of time, I think it's the second half of June and the first half of July, essentially. So in the case of this, it's just named after the Indian version of Gemini. We can get past that. But what is cool here is that this is matured, sorry, not, yeah, it's matured in first fill American white oak and then finished in first fill bourbon barrels. So it's gonna have quite a bit of bourbon influence here. It's gonna taste probably a little bit different than a lot of the other Indian whiskeys that I've had. Um, but who knows? You know, the, the Christmas 2020 was uh, done in first fill bourbon barrels as well. Or no, I'm sorry, that was virgin white oak as well. So. I loved that whiskey and I still have it. Actually, I refuse to finish it. I have that problem all the time. I refuse to finish bottles that I like. Um, and this one's another one that I'm really excited for. So let's go ahead and pour this. And you know, thanks Paul John uh, for sending this along. Really appreciate it. All right, so obviously I don't have a ton of this, so I'm gonna do kind of this first taste. This will be the only real review I, I do of this, but if you're looking to buy this, uh, I mean, it's pretty expensive. It's $250 to $300, depending on where you find it. But keep in mind that their original Zodiac, which was very highly acclaimed, was about the same price. And, you know, for what it's worth, let's not get into the whole debacle that happened last year with Jim Murray, but this was his third best whiskey in the world, I believe. Is what, yeah, world's third finest whiskey. So for what it's worth, you know, the guy still has a good palate. All right. Let's go ahead and give this a nose. Now, actually, I will say before I even get into that, the color on this is beautiful. And uh, that's gonna be obviously because it's still getting a ton from those barrels. I am expecting this to be very tannic, um, you know, taste a lot like oak. So let's go ahead and nose this. Oof, hold on, <laughs> 58%, wow, that just stings the nostrils. It stings the nostrils in a good way. <laughs> is there anybody in the world who just doesn't love quoting Anchorman. <laughs> it's quite pungent. All right, so it's uh, mellowing out just a little bit here. So it's, uh, it is fruity as in most Paul John. Um, one thing that you, you might wanna know is that this is from the Goa area of India and that area all of the whiskeys I've had from there have been very tropical notes, so this is no different off the bat. But there is a heavier presence in there. It's, uh, uh, I think I was on with that tannic bit. It's very woody. Um, it's giving kind of like some body to the nose. Almost, the, the ABV on here, I don't want to add any water at the moment just because I, I kind of want to have this straight out of the bottle. But I, I almost wish I could because the ABV here despite my love of high ABV, is actually making it very hard to nose this. For anybody who's curious, a little tip that you can do if it's too high ABV, just don't stick your nose all the way in the glass. Super complicated tip, but you know, best tips are usually easy. You can also waft if you wanna be a little pretentious about it. <laughs> After it calms down a little bit, you can get your nose in there. All right, so there's some spices kind of becoming prevalent here. It's uh, almost like, you know, people will say Christmas spices. I like to be a little bit more specific with that. I'm gonna say it's nutmeg and kind of like a ginger spice. So, there's a little bit of a, like a waxiness. Um, I did see on the back of this that there's a couple of, of tasting notes and nosing notes. It did say beeswax, but that's, not quite what I'm getting here. Um, you know, if I'm thinking about, I really want to differentiate wax and, and beeswax, uh, I mean, I guess I will, but I'm trying to think like, <laughs> it's going to sound ridiculous and some of you parents out there might get it. <clears throat> if you know what wiki sticks are, they are essentially just wax. Um, they're big pieces of wax and they, they kind of melt with your hands, uh, the warmth from your hands and you can make stuff out of them. It smells a little bit like that wax 
uh, in a good way, but still that's how it's different than beeswax. I always, I guess maybe I equate beeswax a little bit more with too much honey. Um, the two are just hard to differentiate. I've never smelled beeswax without honey attached to it. So I guess that's what I smell. <laughs> oh, well. It also said that there was a licorice uh, note to this, but I don't get that here. I'm a little surprised because I, I looked at a couple of things. I as I try to go into these first tastes as blind as I can, but I did, you know, see like right in here comes a little card and in the card there's some notes. So of course I looked at it and couldn't turn away before I saw some of these. But for my experience, I'm not getting licorice all that much, but maybe I'll get that on the taste. Speaking of which, I think I've tortured myself long enough. Let's go ahead and get a taste. Cheers. Bink. Mmm. Mmm. Whew. That went a totally different way than I expected. All right, I'm gonna need another sip to get to get much of a hold on that. Wow. You know, this is a heavy 58%. I am surprised. I often drink very high ABV whiskeys, and many of them do not have this kind of a, a kick to them. So Definitely going to need a couple more sips before, you know, I kind of let that relax a little bit, <laughs> but wow. Now, just on an off note, the legs on the glass actually kind of don't reflect 58%, which is interesting. Um, for those that don't know, if you have a higher alcohol content, you'll, you'll get legs dripping down the side. Now, they're starting to show up a little bit here, but thicker legs typically denote a higher ABV. So what people are looking for when they swirl their glasses of wine is they're trying to look for those those legs. All right. OK, interesting. So whereas the nose was much more tropical, the taste is um, it's oaky in a way. It's not heavy oak, but there's it's it's oaky. I'd say like medium bodied. Um, it's got like dark chocolate going on there too, which very good. Hmm. Let me try again. Honey. It's very sweet on the finish. This is all right. So here's I think this is probably the best way I can describe this whiskey in a first tasting scenario. The nose does not match the taste, but that's a good, like a good thing. It's not that either one's bad. It's just showing that it evolves, right? So the taste starts off. I mean, it's going to be hard to work through that ABV, no matter how used to high ABV whiskeys you are. Um, I think it's, I think I can say that with confidence. Like I am very used to high ABV whiskeys and that one still was a shock. So past there on, let's say on your second sip, you're going to be getting heavier notes finished with tropical notes and that's really cool actually even just now like what has it been 45 seconds or so like all i'm tasting is chocolate which is interesting because it's almost gone in full circle back so wood chocolate kind of like middle bodied i want to say honey i i gotta say honey um and then it goes into a little bit of a fruit flavor Something, something tropical, not like a pineapple, but maybe, yeah, maybe not tropical. Maybe like a, maybe like a lemon or an orange, something citrusy. Can't put my finger on it, but I'm going to have another sip in a minute. And then it finishes with chocolate, like heavy chocolate. All I'm tasting now is chocolate and honey. And it's just a really cool finish. I, I'm, I'm just consistently impressed by Paul John. Everything that they put out, I just love. It's, it speaks to me, so. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to go with that orange as being that middle bodied area. I think it, it goes dark to middle to light, and I just like that a lot. This is a really cool one. Here's the thing, as I, I might have mentioned earlier in the video, this is about $250 to $300. It's going to be hard to find. If you manage to get this one, I don't think that you're going to be disappointed in the money that you spend. I always tell people to buy Indian whiskeys. It's definitely an overlooked category of whiskey. 
this one is something special. And I think this is really cool. So, Paul John, thanks for sending this along. Um, psyched to have it. And I'm sad that there's only half of this thing. Actually, I, I poured a little less than half, so maybe I'm I'm happy. I might say this and actually give a couple of my friends a little taste of this. Um, people I'm trying to indoctrinate into Indian whiskey. So thank you guys for joining me here on this first taste, and I hope you have a great rest of your night. Cheers.